Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Lifestyle Pioneers. This episode is a just short wrap up of the Gib River Road because we've had so many people ask us so many questions, so we thought we'd film a wrap up for you guys. So I hope you enjoyed our yeah our episodes. We did a four part series along the Gib, our two and a half week trip. It was roughly um, had an absolute ball. Yeah, look, I guess one of the main questions is preparing for the Gib. So how we got ready to do the big trip. It can be a bit daunting going on a trip, a remote trip like like the Gib. Uh, look, it really just comes down to, to focusing on the basics and making sure that your vehicle's mechanically sound. Uh, we did, a, while we were in Kununurra, we got the tires rotated, got them checked out. I went over the vehicle, especially tow bar bolts, things like that, wheel nuts. Just did a full sort of going over of the vehicle, making sure that everything was in pretty good order before we set off. And I did the same thing to the caravan as well. Um, nothing too complicated, no need to go crazy, but yeah, just, just the basics. The other one we get asked about is food, is how we, yeah, food and resources. So, so obviously you've just got to um, think about how many days you're going to be away, leave a bit of contingency for extra side trips and stuff, but basically we just went uh, for four weeks, we went two weeks of meat and veg, like fresh ingredients, and then two weeks of long life food, so that you just eat your fresh ingredients first, and then the end of the trip you're eating your long life food so when you go to the supermarket though everyone has got the same idea so you might need to do a couple of trips to the supermarket to get everything you want or just adapt on the fly if you don't have time for that cryovac your food it's like as much as you can you get way more in your freezer which is yeah just a hot tip and um yeah just think about storage space and containers and if there's any product that you can get in long life form buy it in long life form yeah, and powdered form. powdered form. The less yeah. liquids you carry, the better. Uh, yeah, look, and then the other thing, I guess, is just planning where you're going to go, what you're going to see, everything like that. Um, look, we did minimal planning before we left. That's how we roll. <laughs> we like to try and stay pretty flexible. So, yeah, we didn't have an itinerary or anything like that. We had a few bucket list items, obviously, as most people do, that we wanted to get to, but that was about it. I uh, can't recommend highly enough the HEMA uh, Atlas and Guide. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. That was our Bible for this trip. It um, was so good. Very limited phone service along there, so you're not going to be able to jump on wiki camps and things like that. And it also had some extra campsites that aren't listed on wiki camps as well, so it helps you get away from the crowds a little bit more. And a place like the Gib2, the wiki camp app just has dot after dot after dot, and it can just be so <laughs> overwhelming. And I was like, I don't know which ones we're going to stop at. So we just, yeah, rolled with the um, HEMA maps, and, yeah, it was great because that night I could just chill out and look at it and go, oh, yep, this is coming up tomorrow. Let's check out this one, this one, and this one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it worked really well. All right, so that's the prep and the planning. Here's our thoughts. So this is something we filmed uh, when we got to the end of the Gib. So here's our thoughts on the Gib and uh, and some of our favourite spots we stayed and some of our highlights. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, that is the Gib River Road done and dusted. Pun intended. <laughs> Pun intended, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Derby's just down that way, so we're going to roll into Derby now. But yeah, that, that wraps up the Gib for us. What did you think? Amazing. You've got to do it at some point and probably try and do it before they seal the entire road because it was a lot of fun. Yeah, there, it certainly was. And I think just so many highlights, it's going to be hard to narrow down. What was your favourite? I really liked El Cuesta Gorge, the McMicking Pool yep. hike that we did. That yep. was epic. That was so good. Yeah, that'd be up there for me as well. I actually liked, um, I kind of knew El Cuestro was going to be good. Everyone talks about El Cuestro. I think the hidden gem was probably Galvin's Gorge. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Galvin's, Galvin's was the one we hadn't heard anything about. We just called in there and it was really good. Perfect, apart from you almost being eaten by a typhoon. Yeah, apart from the typhoon, <laughs> but that was, that was kind of cool as well. Uh, yeah, so overall, like just a great trip. Two and a half weeks, roughly, we ended up spending out there. Uh, if we did it again, I'd probably spend a little bit longer, to be honest. I think when you're there for the first time, you're not quite sure what to expect, how much time to spend at each place, how long you're gonna be out there for, so you kind of leave time up your sleeve. And then I think we sort of got to the end and realized we'd left a bit of time up our sleeve, and I could have done another probably week or even 10 days out yeah, there, but. I'd agree. Yeah. And we had enough water and food to do it, so. Yeah, yeah. Good. Water's, water's easy to get, fuel's easy to get, you just got to manage your, fu your food, there's not a lot of fresh food out there, Mount Barnett Roadhouse, you can top up on a few things, but yeah, you really, as long as you've got good food, you'll get fuel and water, no worries. Yeah, how do you think the van went? Yeah, really good, I, yeah, I was pretty surprised, um, well no, I wasn't actually, <laughs> I expected it to hold up well, and it did, uh, we did have a few breakages, uh, not nothing major. What broke? Well, I got to say, like, 
nothing structural everything to do with the van as far as you know we never got dust in we never had any major component failures or anything like that structurally the van is sound it's just a few of the components that are screwed into it or mounted into it we had a little thing break in the fridge which is really minor but kind of crucial <laughs> it holds the bottom shelf in the door holds the milk <laughs> which is where the milk and all our you know bigger tall bottles are imagine milk going over corrugations on that shelf it yeah didn't, didn't like it <laughs> so it snapped a little plastic lug off which is crucial for holding that on uh we had a couple of screws come out of the window blinds again, which we've had as a problem before, which I need to get fixed properly. I've never really sorted that properly and that sort of reared its head again. Um, just on one window blind for some reason, I don't know, yeah, whether it was, yeah, don't know what the cause of it is, but I just need to change the fixings in that to make it a bit more secure. Anything else? Um, the Sirocco fan, the back yeah. of the broke. Bizarre, one Sirocco fan just snapped a little thing again tiny little bit of plastic that broke that is crucial to the fan operating properly so we'll have to look at getting that fixed or replaced and um, the fans in the bathroom it's making a funny sound i think it's that's just, just making a wobble yeah sound. it might have just rattled loose a lot of things rattling loose you really got to go around and sort of tighten everything up but i think apart from that yeah we didn't know major issues which is surprising considering the road was really rough in some short sections and unavoidably rough it got to the point yeah. it was quite uncomfortable in the car for some sections so you can just imagine what's going on in that van, especially with everything like inside that fridge and places like that. Doesn't matter how well you secure things, uh, things move around a little bit. I was impressed with how much swimming there was. What do you think about you know, going late in the season? I loved having like so many places we had it to ourselves. That was amazing. Yeah. But then there were a few places that it didn't seem worth the detour to go when it wasn't gonna be at its best. So we, did, we skipped Mitchell Falls for that reason. Um, but I think we'll be back maybe mid-season, like yeah. early early in the wet, but not too early. We've heard it gets pretty uncomfortable if you're like the first or second people through. It's still quite humid. So once the humidity dies off, I reckon it'd be nice to go see a few of those places, but you're going to be fighting the crowd, so. It is a balance, isn't it? It's hard. It's, suits you. It's a hard call to make. You go early in the season, there's more water, it'll be hotter. Mid-season, there'll be good water, it'll be cooler, but there'll be people and lots of them. Mm. and later in the season like we've done it less water but less people and it's the temperatures and the, the weather was fantastic so oh, so good i'm, I'm kind of glad we kind of accidentally came this late we were planning to be on it a bit earlier things didn't work out and i'm kind of glad it did i think it actually worked out as being the perfect trip for us um, i'm glad we did the things we did and i'm not disappointed by the things we missed out on because i know we'll be back we'll do it again we might do it the same we might do it differently but this one is just the beginning for us, for the Kimberley. We have fallen in love, uh, as a lot of people do, and yeah, we just can't wait to, we've got so many cool ideas of yes, extra of places we want to explore. Like, we're gonna get a bit further off the beaten track next time, and yeah, I don't know, we might even leave the van behind for the next one and really push into the into the more remote areas, so. That'll be fun. Yeah. Looking forward to that. And maybe with and the bigger- And having that knowledge too, that you've done that once, you know what to expect, it'll be much easier, I think, to do those more remote tracks. Yeah, I would say for your first trip, I mean, it depends what you like. I like to sort of do a first trip if I know I'm going to come back to a place, do a bit of a recce, do a siding run, get a feel for the place, go and see the major um, areas, and then and then you sort of start to figure out what you might do the second time around. But, yeah, suit yourself. You can't go wrong. Honestly, it's 99% of what there is to see is just pull off the main road and go and see it. You don't really have to think too hard. You don't have to do a heap of planning. Don't overthink it. Don't um, overbook it. Just just go with the flow. There's heaps of free camping. I was just going to say, the amount of free camps, they were amazing. They were just so good. Yeah. Like, they're everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Don't feel like you need to stay at stations. Stations are stuff, good for, yeah. for what they're good for. And like El Cuestro yeah. and places like that, if you want to see what's there, you've you kind of got to stay there or you've at least got to pay their, their fees to go in there. Um, look, station stays are great. We love them. But at the same time, the free camps were great too. So I think in the two and a half weeks, we did four nights at El Cuestro, two nights at Manning Gorge. They were the only paid camps we did. The rest of the time was free camping, so. Which was your favorite free camp? Favorite free camp's gotta be dog chain. I think just being able to have swimming right at your campsite, it's hard to beat. Um, yeah, and, and then probably favorite paid campsite was Manning Gorge. Uh, cause yeah. it had the swimming right Just cause there. it had swimming right at yeah. the campground. You can't go wrong when the weather's hot and you can just walk up and go for a swim whenever you want. It's fantastic. It's good. And croc, relatively croc free. There was some crocs in dog chain, but none that'll stir you up too much. Yeah. What about I you? My favourite was, oh, I've forgotten the name of it. Was it Russ? Cr no. What was uh, that drive? Hand River. Hand River. Yeah. Hand River was my favourite. I yeah. loved it. it I'll was tell you just what. Relaxing. I could have been there for two and a half weeks. If you were, if you were a bit there. earlier in the season and there was water in the Hand River and you sw could swim there, I think you'd struggle to find a better free camp on the Gib. Yeah. Um, there might be better ones further off the Gib, but close to the Gib. 
uh, Han River, if there's any water in it, that's got to be a stop. So that's, that's just not far from Gib River Station. Uh, but just... don't tell anyone else about it because I want to be there next time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shh, don't shh. tell anyone. Keep it between us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, that pretty well wraps it up. I think, um, yeah, we're blown away. Absolutely had a ball. Uh, we're going to go and explore Derby now and then start heading over towards Broome. Get these boys to a beach. Get over to the beach. Can't wait to see the surf. It's been five months since we've seen the beach or the surf. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. And, yeah, stick around. Next time we'll, uh, we'll see you, we'll be on the coast. So there you go. So that's that's our thoughts at the end of the gib. Uh, look, at the end of the day, we had an absolute ball. As we said in that clip there, it was just, we fell in love with the Kimberley. We're definitely going back. Yeah, we would definitely be back. Absolutely. Yeah. We're working as hard as we can behind the scenes to keep punching out more and more content. Those Sunday travel episodes will always come out every Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, but we're also going to be trying to release more videos like this one in between those just to help you guys out as much as we can. We're all about inspiring, educating, and equipping you to get out there and enjoy adventures in this incredible country that we live in. Uh, and liking this video helps us out as well. Uh, that We'd really appreciate that. That'll mean that YouTube will recommend our videos to more people and we'll get our message out there a little bit more. And final thing is watch the ads. Yay, 10% of all our revenue from our YouTube channel goes towards an Australian charity uh, to help 